Let's ask commissioners made the necessary for your comfort. The preparation is very good. I'm very happy, extremely happy, because this is my first time. And I prepare to follow the rules and regulations given to me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Hello and welcome to another edition of the program as you answer the call. I am Rashida Abu Bakar, your regular host. Glad to be with you once again. Preparatory to the commencement of the 2023 Hajj, officials of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and the Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah have had a series of meetings dealing with issues related to the conduct of the 2023 Hajj exercise were discussed. The latest was a virtual meeting on the guidelines for the Hajj and other related matters. Details of what transferred at the meeting will form the trust of our spotlight segment. Also in the package are our other regular segments such as Narco News Diary, Making the Heart. The quiz segment is also coming up. Details of these are more in the course of the program. Don't go away. Every Muslim is a potential pilgrim. To make the Hajj possible for the Ummah, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Narcon, is running a Hajj saving scheme through Jai's Bank. The scheme allows depositors to gradually save for the Hajj over a period of time. Registration into the Hajj saving scheme is ongoing for all Muslims. Muslims wishing to perform Hajj can be enrolled into the scheme through the following outlets. Narcon offices across the country, state pilgrims welfare boards, agencies and commissions, any branch of Jai's Bank in the country. Enrollment can also be done directly by logging into dedicated sites for the scheme. Let's participate and support the Hatch Saving Scheme for better Hatch services. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The program begins with the news diary. Top on the lineup. Saudi government restores Nigerians' pre-COVID hard slots for 2023 Hajj exercise. And Saudi agency Moaz Sassari funds Narcon for poor feeding arrangement during the 2022 Hajj. Details of these are more shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> The Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah has approved the pre-COVID-19 Hajj slots allocation to the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. The approval was announced by the Director General in charge of Hajj missions in the Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah, Bahuddin bin Yusuf Alwani, during a virtual meeting between Nigerian Hajj officials and their Saudi counterparts held on Tuesday, 21st of December, 2022. Reacting to the announcement, Narcon Chairman Al Hajj Zikrullah Kulle Hassan expressed gratitude and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for restoring the slots allocation as well as the early preparations for the 2023 Hajj. On behalf of the National Hajj Commission and the Muslims in Nigeria, I want to thank you for this information we hear, we hear this morning. Because for people here in the Hajj Commission and the Muslim, it's indeed a good news to hear that we are going to get the allocation we used to get. It's a good news that there is no age limit. It's also good news that we don't need to do the PCR. Indeed, all of us are happy to hear this. Al Haji Zikrullah further appealed to the Saudi authorities to allow Narcon handle the feeding management for its pilgrims during Mashair activities so that they can serve them better than what was obtained during the 2022 Hajj. <laughs> Meanwhile, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Narcon, has secured an approval for the refund of 542,033 Saudi Riel equivalent to 
864,567 Naira from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The amount covers the cost of the poor feeding services rendered to the Nigerian pilgrims at Mina and Arfa by the company for Mutawifs in charge of pilgrims from non-Arab countries. The approval was contained in a letter to the commission signed by the chairman of Muassasa, Dr. Ahmed bin Abbas Sindi, dated 18th December 2022. Narcon Commissioner in charge of Policy Personnel Management and Finance, al Noura Hassan Yakasai, while acknowledging the receipt of the letter, said the development was sequel to the complaint lodged by the commission and states to Muassasa about the poor feeding at Mashair. One of the things that both the pilgrims, the State Pilgrims Welfare Board and the NACON as a whole, we are complaining to Muassasa about it. That uh, the services rendered actually were very poor and below standard, especially the services in terms of catering, that is in terms of feeding. Because the refund is for the feeding that was poorly served. Al Haji Noura pointed out that the refund is for states that lodged complaint with Muassasa about the poor feeding of their pilgrims at Mashair. Uh, when they are making the refund, there are states that made complaint. So it is those states that really made complaint that they are getting refund for their pilgrims. We have a record since that time that how the state that were affected and we have a record of those that have applied for the refund for those poor catering services. So from the letter we receive, it is already categorized that uh, so so state. I think it affects about 11 states, and there is also an amount or a value attached to each state. In another development, the management of National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, played host to a high powered delegation from the Nigerian Society of Physiotherapy. This was on Tuesday, 20th of December, 2022. The delegation was at the commission to solicit for partnership with NACON so that it can contribute its quota during the forthcoming Hajj exercise as a professional body in the health sector. Acting chairman and commissioner in charge of PRISO at NACON, who presided over the meeting, says the inclusion of medical personnel on NACON national medical team is always done with strict adherence to laid down guidelines issued by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia are the ones who usually give us um, uh, guidelines. They give us guidelines on all the services we provide there, whether it is uh, health, health guidelines, whether it is um, accommodation, feeding, everything they have guidelines for them. And their guidelines are to be strictly followed. And this time around, in 2022, the guidelines they sent to us, they even included that all the documents of the medical personnel we are bringing, we must send it all to them for them to do screen on them before they give us permission to bring those persons. Earlier in his presentation, the leader of the delegation who represented the National Chairman Nigerian Society of Physiotherapy, Dr. Bashir Kaka, stressed the importance of physiotherapists in the national medical team. Why are we saying physiotherapy is important? Because uh, physical demands associated with Hajarite, a lack of pitiness in most of the pilgrims, predispose them to sustaining various musculoskeletal injuries during the Hajj. These injuries include delay muscles, onset soreness, sprain, strength, and so many things. And these injuries are amenable to physiotherapy management. Furthermore, pilgrims are likely to, uh, to experience exacerbation of chronic symptoms. As we know, most of them are elderly and they are already having predisposing conditions like arthritis, back pain, cardiac problems, and so on. So they need to be managed before, during, and even after the Hajj exercise by physiotherapists. The presence of physiotherapists throughout the Hajj exercise will reduce the annual burden of medical care as well as the workload in the clinic. If you are just tuning in, 
The program is as you answer the call, sponsored by the National Heart Commission of Nigeria and Akon to keep you informed about the activities of the commission and other heart-related matters. The National Heart Commission of Nigeria and Akon had a series of meetings with Saudi Ministry of Heart and Umrah on ways of ensuring a heat free 2023 heart exercise. The latest was a virtual meeting. Our spotlight segment will focus on the outcome of the meeting as well as plans put in place by Nakon for a successful heart in 2023. Stay and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia held a virtual meeting on Tuesday, the 21st of December 2022. The meeting, which was in furtherance of preparations for the 2023 Hajj, deliberated and agreed on guidelines that would define the conduct of the upcoming Hajj exercise. It was conducted in Arabic and presided over by the Saudi Director General in charge of Hajj missions in the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah, Bahauddin bin Yusuf Al Wani. <laughs> With the aid of translators, the two sides discussed and resolved on the following guidelines for the conduct of the 2023 Hajj, some of them with far-reaching implications. The guidelines include restoring Nigeria's pre-COVID-19 Hajj slots for the 2023 Hajj, abrogation of PCR test requirement for entry into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, removal of age limit or barrier to participate in pilgrims, Nakan given the right to choose packages for pilgrims service from the mutawifs of African non-Arab countries. Others are e-truck and e-wallet, now the only means of payment approved by Saudi authority. All arrangements for accommodations must be concluded by the 10th of February 2023, while arrangements for other services by the 27th January 2023. Nakan is also urged to submit details of screen airliners to fast track the operations. Responding to the announcements, Nakan Chairman al Haji Zikullah Kulle Hassan appreciated the Saudi authorities for the timely information, saying that Nigerians will be delighted with the new guidelines. For us, some of the issues we want to raise has actually been answered in your presentation, but we would like to make a special and specific request in the manner of the allocation. Last year's Hajj the ministry divided the allocation between the states and the two operators. Zikrullah further made some requests to Saudi government, which, if approved, he said, will facilitate Nakhon's plan for better Hajj operations in 2023. We still believe that the, the tents at the Mashair needed to be improved, the facilities at the tent needed to be improved. In, uh, to correspond with the amount charged for the services. If these requirements are met, in addition to having the guidelines in place, Nakon is rest assured of a heat free hatch for her pilgrims, devoid of the challenges experienced during the 2022 hatch. For us, um, we have done a thorough review of last year's hatch operations. We have also recognized that the fact of lack of time was indeed one of the main issues that were inimical to us to have a, a, a stress-free hajj. And I think from the lessons learned, we have already set up uh, the strategy to ensure that we are quick to action in many of those areas of uh, turbulence. With the, with the advantage of the time we have now, we have already started preparation, and I want to assure Nigeria that, inshallah, with Allah's support, that we are going to have an Ish Free Hajj 2023, inshallah. What will particularly come handy to Nakan is the increase in the number of slots. This will enable the Commission to take in more pilgrims for next year's Hajj. This, Nakan says, is a welcome development and is well prepared for it. Of course, uh, last year or this year we did 43,000 in a very short time a period that is in less than two months though it comes with it came with a lot of challenges but now we have up to about six months to prefer 
And all along, the commission has been doing 60, 70, 80 uh, thousands. So now, with enough time or period to refer for every sale, I think uh, we're, we're not going to have any problem. One, we know exactly the number of programs that will uh, be airlifted in the sense that uh, maybe at the end of a period, we will give period when the pilgrims that want to go, they pay their money. By the end of the day, we will know how many pilgrims that are going to be uh, lifted, either maybe 80, 90,000. Even if we get the whole uh, allocation that they normally give to Nigeria before Corona, I think we are ready with it because we have enough time. The, the commission has always been used to catering for much more people than we had last year. Uh, our people are willing and ready to get more pilgrims. Actually, we even told the Saudi Arabia that we want much more than what we used to get. But when we receive the official letter from them, we now know exact number to tell Nigerians. And of course, we will be willing and ready to take all the pilgrims to the kingdom and ensure their welfare is also uh, uh, protected. The commission also noted with satisfaction the insistence by Saudi Arabia on making the e-truck and the e-wallet as the only approved means of payment for the 2023 hunt. I think this is a good uh, development in the sense that uh, all along uh, we have been making payments through e-truck since I, I think when they started using the e-truck. The only thing is that uh, we paid some like deposit then the balance when we reach Saudi Arabia after uh, 2020, I, I mean after the Hajj, whatever is the balance after we have uh, verified everything in terms of number and quality of things, and then we paid them back. But that one normally we used to pay them through check. But now that uh, the Saudi authority says that uh, everything is going to be through e track I think it makes things honestly easier and simpler for us. The removal of age limit by the kingdom is also welcomed by Nakan. The Quran was very explicit. You worship Allah until when you can even breathe. And that is why age is not an excuse for worshiping. Now, I'm too old, I cannot do salah. You are going to be in trouble. I'm too old, I cannot uh, give zakah. So, but for us, the age. It's not an issue as they are stated. It is the health that's an issue. Sometimes you can be young but infirm, that is sick. And you can be old and strong. I guess I've seen some older men do what younger men cannot do. So the health authorities will go up and do it to satisfy a pilgrim able to do the hard operation. Added to the measures already taken to ensure a successful Hajj in 2023, Nakan chairman also said that he will soon lead a delegation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on a pre-Hajj visit to engage service providers and inspect tents of Muna and Arafah before signing memorandum of understanding with key partners. Lessons learned from this year are meant to serve as an experience to make it better next year. We already started the strategy and the plan for next year's Hajj. We know that Allah's willing, it will be much more better than the experience that has just ended. Masha Allah, coming up next is making the Hajj. Tonight, Imam Tajuddin Oyebanji continues discussion on the three types of heart. Let's hear him. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik. Tonight, on Making the Hajj, Imam Tajuddin Oyebanji continues discussions on the three types of Hajj available for intending pilgrims to choose from. What condition is peculiar to Hajj if round? And anybody that's going to perform Hajj al Ifrod must not perform Umrah before. If you perform Umrah either in Shawwal or in Zul Qa'ada, you cannot perform Hajj al Ifrod again in Zul Hijjah. It's a condition. It is either you choose between Kiran and Tamatri, even, even if you are living in Mecca or if you are living in Meqat. Animal sacrifice or Hadaya is compulsory in both Kiran 
and tamatu. The sacrifice is a wajib, mean wajibatul hajj. And it is compulsory for a mutamatse and makarri. So somebody who is performing qiran, that is accompanied hajj, and the, and the same Muslim brother who is performing uh, tamatra, both of them are given the order and the compulsory statement by the Prophet Sallam that they must sacrifice animal. What should both Mukarrin and Mutamate do in the event they cannot afford to sacrifice an animal or offer hadaya? If you don't have the means, then you must fast. Fasting is the alternative for any Muslim who has no means to sacrifice animal. Then the fasting now is even been given a flexibility time, a very good flexibility time. Ten fast. You must observe ten day fasting, which will represent or which will now be an alternative for the sacrifice that he couldn't afford to present to Allah. So it's either now he present the three Allah say three days in Mecca and seven days when he moved back home. So it is not compulsory for him or for her to observe a 10 day fasting during the period of Hajj. That is why Allah legislated in the Quran that three days fasting in Mecca and seven days at home and Allah said tilka asharatun kamila. Which type of Hajj was performed by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and why? Uh, according to the scholars of, uh, of Sunnah and uh, Islamic uh, theology, we get to understand that <clears throat> the Prophet uh, performed Hajj Qiran. But despite the fact that the Prophet chose this for himself, because he has his sacrifice with him, he has his anima with him, but he called the attention of the entire Muslim Ummah on that very day, at that very point. He said, I did be, I did not even, I did be, I did not afford to bring my animal, I would have preferred Tamato. Because he called their attention that many of you has no animal to sacrifice. So now change your intention now. He now asked them to change their intention from Qiran to Tamato. Imam Tajuddin Oyebanji says all the three types of Hajj are optional to intending pilgrims. Now it's time to know the winner of last week's quiz. And the question for this week, good luck. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, who earns the rewards of the Hajj performed by a minor? Again, who earns the rewards of the Hajj performed by a minor? The correct answer is his parent. The winner is Musa Yahya from Kaduna State. He provided the answer ahead of others. Musa Yahya will be contacted on how Nakon will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week. And the question is, when is Hadaya right observed? Again, when is Hadaya right observed? Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Up next are your messages. Hafiz Umar from Kano State sent in the first message. It reads, Assalamu alaikum. I am impressed with the way Nakon is managing Hajj affairs. May Allah bless you all. Yahya Ajenifuja from Lagos State sent in the second message. It says, Jazakumullahu khair for this wonderful program. Keep it up. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you next time with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send in your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile phone number and other social media platforms. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا